morning. I'm Dr. Enrique Skolnik, a nutritionist and veterinarian with Progressive Dairy Solutions. We're here this morning to discuss proper milking procedures and how proper milking procedures have an impact on cow health and on producing wholesome, high quality milk. Milking is also the time where we harvest the fruit of all our efforts and also the time where we prevent one of the major diseases at dairies, which is mastitis. So we're going to talk today about the seven principles uh, around milking. Uh, first of all, the first thing uh, uh, we do when cows come in the barn is we pre-dip them. And we pre-dip them so that we can kill the pathogens um, at the, uh, on the teeth, on the teeth surface so that when we milk them, um, cows do not contract mastitis. The number one principle of uh, proper milking procedures is pre-dipping. As you can see here, we have a cow that has been pre-dipped and we have contact of that pre-dip over the entire length of the teeth. That is our goal, is to have at least two thirds of the length of the teeth with pre-dip. Also important is the contact time of that pre-dip with the teeth surface as disinfectants don't kill uh, bacteria immediately but they take about 30 seconds to one minute uh, to have a significant kill. Second, we want to have a proper milk letdown and we do that through stripping each teeth at least three times. Third, a very important step during the milking procedure is uh, the wiping of the teeth. We perform this in a circular motion in order to remove as much dirt and bacteria as we can from the teeth surface. Fourth is separating cows that we identify with mastitis for treatment, for proper treatment. Fifth is attaching the machine between 90 and 120 seconds after we strip the teeth. Modern milk machines are equipped with automatic detachers, which should allow uh, that milk machine to come off on its own, just like it has right now, and make sure that your milkers don't overuse the manual option for these machines, as that's, that creates overmilking at the end of the milking and can damage teeth ends. Sixth is uh, contagious mastitis prevention through a proper use of a post dip. And seventh is bringing the cows in gently to the barn and handling them gently in order to minimize stress and maximize milk flow in the barn. Consistency in milking procedures is extremely important. Not only consistency from milker to milker, so that they all have the same milking procedures, but also from shift to shift. Sometimes we see differences in milking procedures from the morning shift to the evening shift, or even within the same shift from milk, milker to milker. In order to control that, we need to be actively checking, uh, making sure that the milking procedures that we established are being followed uh, in the barn. Uh, there are several things that we can do for that. First is spending some time in the barn and just watching the milkers. Or if, we've ha if we have a video camera in the barn, we can review those videos. There are other tools that we can use to perform quality control on our milking procedures. One very helpful one is to actually monitor milk filters. As you can see, this milk filter is perfectly clean. It hasn't been used. And here we have a milk filter that has been used and has some dirt and some gargate on it. If we uh, monitor these filters on a daily basis, we can see how different shifts and how different milkers are doing uh, wiping and removing dirt from the teats and also how well they're identifying and separating cows with mastitis uh, from the regular herd. In addition to the milk filters, we're also constantly monitoring somatic cell counts 
um, through the preliminary results that we get. We're also monitoring SPC, which is a pre-pasteurized uh, count, bacteria count. It's an indication of how many cows we have with mastitis in the bulk tank. Also LPC, which is the post uh, pasteurized count, which monitors um, bacteria in the milk line, so it monitors how well we're washing the lines. And we also monitor coli counts, uh, which can be an indication of, uh, if they're high, they can be an indication of milking wet cows mm. and having some coli contamination in the milk. So all these tools we use for quality control uh, of our milking procedures. Uh, my main point is that we do need to have some sort of quality control program in order to monitor what we're doing in the barn, in the milk barn.